Welcome to the first video in my series, Threat Hunting with Open Source Software, Suricata, and Elasticsearch. Throughout this video series, we'll work our way through low-level network concepts through higher-level application protocols. We'll also use a suite of tools that can help capture and analyze traffic on a re These skills can be used in research or the workplace, with permission, of course. Computer networks are where it all happens. In this chapter, we'll talk about networks and how they work. Without networks, we wouldn't have Google, YouTube, Facebook, or Netflix. A computer network is a group of computers that know how to talk to each other over a wide array of protocols. The internet is a bunch of networks that are connected to talk to each other and share data. Before we can dig into network security monitoring and the final goal of visualizing data in the ELK stack, we need a bit of understanding on how data is transmitted over a computer network. This this first video gets us looking at some low-level, but easily consumable, concepts. Mainly, information about network packets and different network protocols. In this first video of the network series, we'll look at network packets. We'll look at low-level details of how a computer shares data with other computers. Network protocols can be thought of as layers. From the bottom, the physical layer, as defined in the OSI model, we get the physical transmission of data. This can happen via electricity over a piece of copper cable, radio waves in the air, or light over a fiber optic cable. Consider a string between two cups. That's your physical layer. The string becomes the medium over which data can be transmitted. On top of the physical layer, there are other layers that control how data flows and is understood by various computers and applications. Let's move up the stack. From the physical layer to the data link layer. The most popular data link layer protocols you know are Ethernet or Wi-Fi. This is layer two. You may have heard of some other data link layer protocols, such as Token Ring. This layer gives us the reliable transmission of data between two nodes connected by a physical layer. Next, we'll move up to the network layer, or layer three. Layer three, or the network layer, is a set of protocols that allow computers to talk to nodes on other networks, not just the one that it belongs to. The most common protocols that you've used or heard about are IPv4 and IPv6. IP stands for Internet Protocol, and V4 or V6 is the version. The network layer allows us to create the Internet. We have a reliable way of addressing hosts on other networks and a reliable way of transmitting data to those hosts. Within the IP space, we have public and private routable IP addresses. With the advent of IPv6, we have enough address space to address everything and never run out. By having a publicly documented list of IP spaces, networks know how to route data reliably to the destination. An IP packet, or a piece of data that's sent as a unit, can be defined as having a header and payload. The header contains a source and a destination address, much like an envelope that you would mail 
with the United States Postal Service. The protocol information tells you about what's in this packet in the next enclosed layer. The last component of an IP packet is the length of the payload. This is important for the receiving node to know how much data to expect before the next packet is received. Onward and upward to layer 4. Layer 4 is the transport layer. This transport layer is important because now we can be this transport layer is important because now we can begin to distinguish which programs on the computer can listen for requests to establish communications. Essentially, below layer 4, the kernel or the operating system listens to and responds to requests, such as ping, which is a layer 3 packet with the ICMP protocol. Within the layer 4 scheme, there are two new properties called ports a source and a destination port. You can think of a port as a P.O. box number. Your Layer 3 IP address is a street address of the post office, but inside the post office there are many P.O. boxes, which are analogous to a Layer 4 port. There are some international standards on port definitions. For instance, server port 80 is defined to be an HTTP or web port and server port 22 is defined for SSH. There are two classes of port numbers. Numbers below 1024 are defined to international standards, and above 1024 are open for custom communications. When we continue up the OSI stack, we begin to deal with communications within applications on a host. Session, presentation, and application layers. As we move up the stack, the next layer we'll discuss in our next video is the application layer. The application layer, layer 7, is what we tend to think about most when dealing with protocols such as HTTP for web communications and SMTP for email. We'll focus mostly on layer 7, kind of skipping layer 5 and 6 for now. Now that we've covered the basics, of network packets in the OSI model layers, it's time to capture some packets on the network. In our next video, we'll use a program called TCP Dump to store some live network traffic for analysis. Don't forget to keep an eye out for our next video at Faui.com, F-A-U-I-E. And if you have any questions, as always, you can reach out at Chris at Faui.com.